This is section 532a. We're going to be looking at basic factoring of polynomials. So we're going to try and completely factor a polynomial. Now before we start, we are going to evolve a little bit the idea of dividing with a polynomial. We use division to factor. Okay, so we use division to be able to factor. And you're going to see us using that division to be able to factor once we get to the examples. Now there, there's a few theorems that I kind of want to throw out there and you could probably you know practice a couple of these on your own just to kind of verify it but these theorems essentially allow us to do what we're about to do. The first is the remainder theorem and what the remainder theorem says that if you have a number C and it's substituted in for X in some polynomial that is the same as if you divided by that C as a factor. So in this example here, let's just say if I for dividing by like X minus that C. So if I wanted to say I want to divide by X minus 5, that's the same thing is as plugging in 5. And you're going to get the same remainder. I would try it out. I would do f of 5, I'd pause right now, do f of 5, which is going to be 3, 5 squared plus 5, and then divide that by x minus 5. 3x squared plus x plus 0. Or you can do synthetic division, put the 5 in the box, write out the coefficients, 3, 1, and 0, and go through and divide it, and I guarantee you what you're going to get here is the same as what you're going to get there with the remainder. So that's what the remainder theorem says. Basically dividing and evaluating equal processes when we're using it in terms of a, a linear factor and for us to find the remainder. Then brings us to the fundamental theorem of algebra. And this is the leading up to, this is the big theorem that we really need to know. We kind of talked about it a little bit, but whatever the degree of the polynomial is, that is the number of complex uh, zeros or the maximum number of complex zeros that we could have. And so it's assuming suppose f is a polynomial function with a complex number of coefficients greater than equal to one then it has at least one complex zero. Meaning you know if it's something you know x to the ninth power well you know with multiplicity it could be something to the ninth right and so I have at least one complex zero I at least have one zero that exists within it and it could be imaginary it could be real but I have at least one and so just remember including multiplicity that number there that degree that gives us an idea of how many possible zeros there could be and we're gonna use that the next is the complex factorization theorem it's very similar to the factorization theorem that we already talked about, but essentially I can take every single complex number and write it as a factor, including its multiplicity. So if you have repeats, remember the degree, oh not degree, but the exponent of each factor that represents the multiplicity. And so we can write all of our complex zeros in factored form, including with i, and this ties into that fundamental theorem of algebra. You will find at least a complex factor, at least one, when we go to factor a polynomial. Now we're going to start off basic. I know it's not blue here. I'm going to highlight it blue because I know you guys are going to be like, hey, Mr. Duvall, it's not blue. I didn't write this down. I want you to write this down. Look it. I'm highlighting it. It's blue. Okay. So now going through and factoring this, remember we said in the very beginning, I said that division is a tool that we're going to use to factor. So if I'm going to factor this, I'm going to use division. Now, for now, I'm going to be giving you factors. We're going to eventually have to find what those possible factors are. But just for now, I'm going to be giving you those factors. So I want to completely factor this polynomial knowing that x plus 1 is already a factor. So there's a different ways that you guys can do this. Some of you guys who like the long division, you can just set it up as long division. And you can go through and you can do it that way, right? That's the way you like it. 
you know, I, I think that takes a little bit too long. So I'm actually going to set it up using the synthetic division. Remember setting it up, put the negative one in the box, write out all the coefficients. So 1, 6, 11, and 6. Add straight down. So 1, multiply to get to the next box, add straight down, multiply to get to the next box, add straight down, multiply to get to the next box. Now when your remainder is zero, it divides into it evenly, which is why this is a factor, right? Given it is a factor, that's why my remainder is zero. So what this means, remember zero, so that's my remainder, constant x, x squared. So right now I have this, which is x plus one, and I have this, which is x squared plus 5x plus 6. That's what I have so far. I factored it. Now we have to ask ourselves, does that factor further? Well, yeah. Yeah, it does. That's actually a quadratic equation. I, can, I could actually factor that using the ways that we know how to factor a quadratic equation. And so that'll factor into x plus 3 and x plus 2. So this polynomial, f of x, I factored that into x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now, we do have to be careful of multiplicity. Now, in this instance, I didn't have to check for multiplicity because it already factored into something that I can use to factor it further. Right? We know how to factor quadratic equations. But on this next one, this is an x to the fourth, it means when I factor it, I know it's not going to be quadratic. It's going to break down into something x cubed. So I have to check for multiplicity again. So given that this is a factor, so negative 2 is in the box, 1, 10, 37, 60, and 36. So I'll write out the coefficients, add straight down, multiply, add straight down, multiply, add straight down, multiply, and so that's going to give me, what is that, negative 42, so add straight down, and multiply. And so I get that. So that's where my remainder, my remainder is 0. Yay, it's a good thing. That means it factored, right? Well, it tells you it is a factor, so it should be 0, right, unless there was some error. But remainder is 0, that's my constant x, x squared, x cubed. So what I have so far is x plus 2 times x cubed plus 8x squared plus 21x plus 18. That's what I have. But this right here, I know what you guys are thinking, ah, I didn't highlight this blue. Mmm, just remembered. But anyways, this part right here, I can factor that piece further. So let's factor that further. And I didn't check for multiplicity. What if there are technically two x plus twos inside that polynomial? So I need to check again. And I'm going to use this. That's the polynomial that I'm going to be dividing further. So I'm going to do 1, 8, 21, and 18. So let's do it again. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. It worked. So now I have two of these, right? And so now that gives me x plus 2 squared, because I have two of them. And then now writing this out, I have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Remember, because this is your remainder constant x, x squared. So now i got to factor this further right here. So factoring that, that's quadratic. That'll factor, see, x and x. The factors of 9 is 3 and 3. 3 and 3 do add to 6. So there we go. And then that gets brought down. So my answer would be x plus 2 squared and x plus 3 squared. That's my result. So go ahead and get this one down as well. So to conclude our lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we learned how to factor a polynomial. But I give you the factors right now. Soon we're going to be factoring polynomials where I don't give you the factors, and you're going to be able to figure out what those potential factors are. And so what did we use to factor a polynomial? Division. Division is a tool that we use to factor. 
So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.